Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me well? OK, perfect. So my name is Chavi. I'm a technical marketing engineer in the InterCloud Fabric team. Um, I will be talking about InterCloud Fabric for business, how it helps enterprises move to a hybrid cloud strategy. So let's get started. Uh, it's a fairly short session, just 30 minutes, and I don't want to go for like an hour or so. If I can convey the message in 30 minutes, it's good enough. I lose my train of thought anyways after that. So uh, short session, we'll just talk about what is InterCloud Fabric, the what, why of InterCloud Fabric, why should you use it, what are the services that it has, like you know, what are the core services that it offers, what are the new features that are added in the newer releases, and then we'll finish up with some references and related sessions that you can go attend. So just, just a very small session uh, covering these few basics. Let's get started. And uh, I, I, a, a couple of weeks back, my boss said, uh, came in once and said to me, hey, your head is in the cloud today. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I always talk to him about cloud. So what's, what's special today? Like, why is my head in the cloud today? And English is not my first language, so I guess I didn't understand him. It's, it's, uh, I Googled later, and I figured, OK, that's what he meant. So let's make sure our head is not in the cloud while we're thinking about cloud today for the next 30 minutes. Uh, as I said, it's a short session, and so I'm not going to go over what, is, what are the advantages of a hybrid cloud infrastructure. We all know hybrid cloud infrastructure lets you achieve best of both worlds of a private cloud and a public cloud infrastructure. Lots of uh, uh, analysis, lots of data collection agencies like IDC did a survey saying that 72% of the enterprises are planning to adopt a hybrid cloud infrastructure next in 2015. So we already know that lots and lots of enterprises are thinking about having a hybrid cloud infrastructure. But uh, it's, it's not that easy to have a hybrid cloud infrastructure to maintain a hybrid cloud infrastructure. And why is that the case? First of all, you're all used to your private cloud infrastructure where you know your firewall services, you know your enterprise IP addresses. And now when you have to burst onto a public cloud, you have to, first of all, you're worried, is my data secure when I'm moving uh, over to public cloud? So security is one of the concerns. Second, it's a hybrid cloud infrastructure. So now you have to maintain two different clouds. You have to maintain two different ways of instantiating workloads. So on private cloud, you were used to doing your workloads in one manner. Now you instantiate your workloads on a public cloud provider. Completely different way of doing things. Maintaining two different management tools. Your control and your visibility of workloads, of security policies, of networking is completely different. And it's all dependent on the public cloud provider's console. A quick show of hands, how many of you are using uh, any public cloud provider? Uh, AWS, is that what you are using? How many of you are using Azure? So you, you guys, are, if, you, if you're using both of them, you know even within public cloud providers, they're completely different. Like every single terminology of them is different. One calls virtual networks VNets. One calls uh, uh, VPCs. You have a direct connect. Other one has an express route. So within public cloud providers, if you want to switch from one public cloud to other public cloud provider, it's, it's a nightmare. You have to learn each and every thing again. Then when, I, when you're moving from private to public, let's say you have a hybrid cloud infrastructure, now you want to uh, have some workloads on private, some on public. On public cloud, when you move there, your IP addresses change. It's a completely different IP addressing, so you have to reconfigure your apps to have a different IP address. You have to learn how to put firewall policies on public cloud and then on private cloud. So security, control, visibility, management, all of them are a problem in a hybrid cloud infrastructure. You have to manage them in different ways. So far, so good. Do, do, do you guys agree with me? So 
And those were the problem statements for Cisco Intercloud Fabric. So let's look into what Cisco Intercloud Fabric provides. Cisco Intercloud Fabric is a software solution that helps you manage a hybrid cloud infrastructure. So a couple of things that I said, it's a software solution. It, it doesn't have a hardware dependency on it. So all you do is you deploy, it's an OVA file, you deploy it. All it needs in your private cloud is a hypervisor. We support uh, VMware, so vCenter, uh, KVM, um, Hyper-V. All these hypervisors are supported. So you deploy that in your private cloud. And from there, you can burst onto different public clouds whenever you want to. And one of the things that I want to like point out here is you can burst onto different public cloud providers. We support AWS, Azure, and different Cisco-supported cloud providers. So you don't have to go to AWS console to deploy workloads there and learn their consoles. You don't have to go to Azure uh, console if you want to burst onto Azure and now learn, now I have to learn how to deploy workloads on Azure and how to put security policies and how to terminate a workload. Everything is done through this one single web interface provided by Cisco Intercloud Fabric solution. So again, it provides you, the solution provides you first choice of bursting onto different cloud providers. Second, a choice of different hypervisors in your private cloud. Third, a single pane of glass to manage workloads running on different public cloud providers. Say that again. Can I do what? Can I have federated zones? What, yes. what do you mean by that? Can you have, if I'm managing one cloud in one area, I'm managing something else, I like to transfer things between the different clouds. Can you do that? Can you segregate authority for different things to people to manage uh, the clouds? OK, so let me rephrase. Your question two, is, two can questions. I? Can, yeah, so can I uh, have kind of a role-based access control over different cloud accesses? Is that the first question? And the second question, can I move uh, workloads from different areas? So first question, uh, let me take your second question first. Uh, can I move workloads between different cloud providers? We support migration from private to public and back from public to private. So yes, you can move your workloads from your private cloud onto a public cloud and migrate them back. Is, is public to public possible? Not today. So the way to do it today is you have to bring it to private and then move it to a public cloud provider. Really what I'm after is that if I have multiple vendors that are going to provide me with different services at different cost points. Can I allocate services automatically between them as, for example, the capacity in one goes down or the price point goes about where I want it? You can do that. Like on Amazon, you can have spot pricing. And on Google, you have a similar service just uh, got announced in there. So if the Amazon spot price goes up above what I want, can I just switch to Google and back and forth as I want to? So, things. okay. So whenever the pricing goes down, you want to switch your workloads or capacity between different cloud, public cloud providers. Is that right? Okay. So you can. There, there's no automated way to do it in Intercloud Fabric, but Intercloud Fabric has REST APIs to deploy workloads in different uh, public cloud providers. You'll have to write your own automation tool on top of it, which monitors how much usage you have, and based on that, deploys the workloads. Intercloud Fabric would be used, the REST APIs of Intercloud Fabric would be used to deploy the workloads on different clouds. You write your own REST scripts on top of it. 
REST API is uh, works with Python, JSON, uh, uh, Java, any, it, whatever uh, scripting language you have. So, okay. So that was the solution overview of what Intercloud Fabric for Business provides. Let's let's take a deeper look into the architecture of Intercloud Fabric, how it works. So in your uh, private. Uh, I, I, in your enterprise, you have your private cloud. So you deploy intercloud fabric. When I say, uh, when, I, when, I, when I mention intercloud fabric provides you a single pane of glass, that is the intercloud fabric director that I was talking about. So uh, you deploy intercloud, intercloud fabric and it gives you this web interface called intercloud fabric director. And when you deploy it, it asks you, hey, what is your VM manager? What is a VM manager is, for example, if you're running, uh, your hypervisor is VMware, then your VM manager is vCenter. If your hypervisor is uh, Hyper-V, then it's SCVMM. So you, you give the credentials of your vCenter, and it connects, to the, uh, it connects to the VM manager, and it figures out what VMs are running in your private cloud, what port groups do you have in your private cloud, and all that information it collects what do you have in your private cloud? Then whenever you want to burst onto a public cloud provider, you say, OK, these are the credentials of the, uh, I want to burst into AWS. These are my account credentials for AWS. How does it let you uh, burst onto different cloud providers is that we create a secure encrypted tunnel to that public cloud provider. Again, it's a secure encrypted tunnel. It's a layer two extension. And when I, why I say it's a secure encrypted tunnel, it's an HTTPS, DTLS, or TLS. We support these three uh, uh, tunnel uh, protocols that you can have this tunnel for. And it's extending your layer two network it's a layer two extension of your enterprise network onto public cloud. So any VM that you deploy on your public cloud will have your provider, your enterprise IP. And that's where I said, you know, when earlier, when if you just go directly to uh, any public cloud provider, they give you a provider IP. And now your IP addressing is completely changed. Here we are, we are doing a layer two extension of your network. So your IPs are still your enterprise IPs. It's like an overlay on top of public cloud. And once you have this secure tunnel created, and by the way, it, I mean, there are lots of things that go into creating the secure tunnel, but from the user point of view, uh, whosoever creates the tunnel, they just have to say these are the account creden credentials and go create the tunnel. Internally, we do, like, we create two VMs, one on private cloud called intercloud extender, and one on public cloud called intercloud switch, and we create the tunnel in between. But to the user, all you have to do is, these are the account credentials for this public cloud, and go create a tunnel. And once you have the tunnel, you can deploy VMs onto that public cloud through this intercloud fabric GUI. You don't have to go to the public cloud provider uh, console to deploy VMs and uh, you know to manage them. And I'll talk a little bit uh, in a little bit about the intercloud fabric services that you can deploy. So now, in addition to creating a tunnel and letting you burst onto different public cloud providers, intercloud fabric also comes with some core services. What are those services? First, uh, VM portability. So that was the question that you asked. We manage, we enable you to move your workloads from private to public and migrate them back from public to private. Other services include security, and I have a slide on what are the security features that we provide on top of public cloud to solve the concern that I started with that is my data secure? Are, are all my VM communications that are happening on public cloud secure? So we provide some security features on top of public cloud. Networking, we provide, uh, and then again, we ha I have detailed slides, but I might not have enough time, but we provide uh, 
a router that you can deploy in public cloud. Uh, uh, in fact, when we create the tunnel, we are deploying a VM, which is a switch, into cloud switch. And we are doing a layer two extension of your network onto public cloud, so you're extending your VLANs on public cloud. So those are some of the networking features, and then management and visibility through that single pane of glass. So let's, let's go a little bit in, deeper into a uh, couple of services that I mentioned. VM port, uh, as, as I said, we will we migrate your VMs from your private to public and public to private. What goes behind when we do that? Uh, it's all about image conversions. And I, I said that different public cloud providers have completely different formats. So AWS, their file format is AMIs. Uh, Azure, their file formats is VHD. So when you're migrating your workload from private, Let's say in private you have uh, vSphere, so your file format is OVA. You have to migrate to AWS. You have to change the file format to AMI. Different public provider, different file format. So we take care of this file format conversion. We'll take the workload, we'll convert it into raw format, we'll put a header in it, and then we'll uh, change it into the required file format. It, File conversion does not take long. What takes long is the uploading the image onto public cloud. It all depends on your disk size, because it's going to convert into raw format. So it all depends on, I'm sorry? It, it depends on your van speed. It depends upon your uh, disk size, yeah. Itself, once it's at uh, your end, it doesn't take much. Is what I'm you're sorry? Saying. The file conversion itself doesn't. If you compare it to the time it takes to upload the image and your van, uh, based on your van speed, uh, the file conversion is minimal. Yeah. So, so we take care of all this conversion. And as I said, to the user, all it is is either the end user or the cloud admin can do the migration. They pick up a VM saying, hey, this is the VM I want to migrate. And this is the cloud, public cloud, that, that I want to migrate it to. And once you do that, it's not a cold migration. The VM on the private cloud would get uh, shut down, and then it will be migrated onto the public cloud. But it is pretty much like a click, click, click. Uh, the user says, this is the VM. Let, uh, the VM gets shut down when it's migrated. Internally, we are converting it. After shutting it down, we convert it into a, the the appropriate file format, and we migrate it over. Then I talked about uh, the security. That was one of the other concerns that I started with, that security on public cloud. Is my data secure on public cloud? Or are my communications secure on public cloud? So we provide different levels of security, as in, I shouldn't say levels, different layers of security on public cloud. And what are those? First of all, the secure tunnel that we create to get your data onto public cloud. Then all the communications that happen between VMs on public cloud are encrypted. There are also a DTLS tunnel that uh, is created between each VM on public cloud. And you have got choices of selecting which hashing algorithm you want for these tunnels, which encryption algorithm you want for these tunnels. There are cloud security groups. Cloud, what are cloud security groups is that for each instance, VM instance that you deploy in public cloud, you can mention that, hey, only these ports. I want to open only SSH port 22. I want to open only HTTPS port uh, 443. So only these ports will be open. And only these ports will be open for these IP addresses. So there you can say, I want to only let my enterprise IP address range access my uh, workloads on public cloud. So you open only those ports for only those specific uh, IP address range. So you can also set up the cloud security groups. You can set up the MAC address pools. What would be the MAC addresses that will get associated to the cloud VMs? And you can also deploy a, a firewall on public cloud. 
So let, let's get into uh, what the firewall provides. And uh, one thing to mention is that, as I mentioned, when you move to public cloud, your firewall policies are completely different. So if you use intercloud fabric, you can have this one single pane of glass where you're managing the firewall policies through this one place, and those policies can be managed for both your private cloud and your public cloud. So, uh, and what, so we provide a firewall that you can deploy on private cloud and on public cloud. What does this firewall uh, provide? You can create security policies, you can create zones. You can say, my uh, one zone is my app servers. My other zone is my web servers. And you can create policies like web can talk to app, but app cannot talk to web. And you can, from this one place, enforce these policies on both, both private and public cloud. Another service, which is a core service of Cisco Intercloud Fabric, is the, route, is the router that we provide that can be deployed on public cloud. First of all, let's talk about why do we need a router to be deployed on public cloud. As I said, we are extending your network onto public cloud. It's a layer two extension of your network onto public cloud. So let's say you had two VLANs, VLAN A and VLAN B and you extended those two VLANs onto public cloud. You deployed some, VLAN, uh, some VMs on public cloud on VLAN A, and then, does this work? No, okay. And then you deployed some, VLAN, uh, some uh, VMs on VLAN B, on public cloud. Now if you don't have a router there, and if you want to talk, if, if a VM on VLAN A wants to talk to a VM on VLAN B, how would that happen? the traffic will go from all the way from a VM on VLAN A, it'll go all the way to the enterprise, get routed there, and then go back to the VM on public cloud on VLAN B. More time lag, more delay. So you can deploy a CSR, cloud services router, on public cloud and achieve inter-VLAN routing. You can also, we also support NATing, so you can uh, have direct access, provide direct access to the cloud VMs through NATing, through a NATing functionality provided by the CSR. And you can also uh, do VPN, direct VPN access to the cloud VMs. So those are some of the networking features that we support. Uh, those are the core networking services features that are supported in the cloud fabric. Then just a quick, um, view onto what are the new features. This is a very upcoming project, and we are adding more and more features onto Intercloud Fabric. So let's look into what are the new features that were uh, introduced in this release 2 to 1 that came um, a month and a half back. So uh, there were lots of new features. Some of them uh, are, uh, from now on, we support seamless upgrade. So once you have deployed intercloud fabric in your private cloud, you have defined some policies, some network policies. These are the VLANs I want to extend. These are the security policies. Going forward, all the new releases, you can seamlessly upgrade. You don't have to redeploy uh, the solution. We added more and more features regarding with support to AWS and Azure. For example, with AWS, we used to support only default VPCs. So we added now a VPC support that you can create a tunnel to a given VPC. Is anybody using Amazon uh, AWS VPCs? Okay, so we can, we can create a direct tunnel to a given VPC and to a given subnet in that VPC. So we support uh, VPCs. Uh, with regarding to Azure, we filled all the gaps. Earlier we had only a router service deployed on AWS. Now you can deploy, not a router, but we provide inter-VLAN routing through an integrated gateway on Azure as well. So you can deploy a firewall, you can deploy, you can have inter-VLAN routing on Azure and on AWS and Cisco supported cloud providers. And one of the features that I uh, 
that lots of customers asked us about was, uh, hey, I already have some VMs on public cloud, in, on AWS. I'm already using AWS, I already have some VMs. Now you're telling me to deploy into Cloud Fabric and manage my workloads through them. But I, I want to manage my already existing workloads through into Cloud Fabric as well. So we added that func functionality as well, that if you already are using AWS and you have instances running on AWS, you deploy into Cloud Fabric and you can onboard those instances onto into Cloud Fabric and manage them through into Cloud Fabric. How is that done? That's a, so for example, let me explain first of all what, what I'm saying. Here is a VM, VM3, that was deployed by customer before they started using InterCloud Fabric. They're already using AWS, they deployed a VM on AWS. Now they started using InterCloud Fabric and they want to manage VM3 through InterCloud Fabric. So they can do that now. It's a, it's a simple process where they go ahead and download uh, a package called onboarding package to onboard those VMs and get into the management of InterCloud Fabric. You download that package, you put that package onto your VM, and uh, it, it's a basically a shell script, so you run that sh shell script. So we have two different packages, one for Linux VMs and one for Windows VM. You download that package onto your VM, and then you uh, go ahead in the GUI, say, now onboard this VM. And once you do these three steps, this VM becomes part of the intercloud fabric and it can be managed through intercloud fabric GUI. Any questions? Okay. So that I think is a very cool feature. Also, I wanted to, before, before I end, I, I, I said that you know, InterCloud Fabric provides you this one single pane of glass to manage different public cloud providers. So let's take a quick look at the GUI that I was talking about and how it provides this one place to manage your workloads. This is the InterCloud Fabric GUI. I have two cloud links right now created, one with AWS and another with Azure. So as you can see, these are the two cloud links that are created. You can have up to 16 cloud links today that you can create. So I can burst onto either AWS and Azure since I have cloud links up for both of them. So the question is, do you support Google as well uh, or just AWS and Azure? Today we only support AWS, Azure, and Cisco-supported cloud providers. I'm sorry? Meta Cloud. So Cisco Cloud Service is pretty much uh, an umbrella. Not today, but it will be, it's on the roadmap. It will become, uh, come, it'll come in future. So let's, let's uh, look a little bit more into this uh, single pane of glass that I mentioned. So it provides different uh, portals. One as an administrator portal who creates the uh, cloud links, who defines who are my end users who will be using this, this public cloud provider. So this is where I created different users and I created myself, Chavini Javan, as a user. Now, the user can log into this portal and start deploying workloads on those cloud links. And so here I logged in as Chavi, as you can see on the right side, it's, it's quite hazy, but uh, I logged in as, a, uh, as the user into this portal, and I can see through this one place, I don't have to go to different places to see that I have two VMs running on my private cloud, that is my vCenter. I have two VMs running on Azure, and I have other few VMs, probably three VMs running on AWS. So I ha I, I, through this one place, I see all the VMs that are running in different places. I deploy VMs on different places through this, this, through this one single pane of glass. I deploy, migrate, uh, terminate, all these things done through this one place. And 
I, I know this is a very short session, and I, I just wanted to cover a few things that, you know, what Intercloud Fabric brings to the table, how the GUI looks like. If you're interested, uh, do go to, uh, there's a deep dive that's uh, happening tomorrow. There's a deep dive session, there's a breakout session on Intercloud Fabric. We have uh, a demo running in the world of solutions where we are showing a three-tier app running on Intercloud Fabric, which is a split-tier uh, app. There are two, uh, two tiers running in public cloud and one tier running in private cloud. Everything managed through Intercloud Fabric. So do stop by at the World of Solutions, and we can give you a demo of uh, the entire GUI and how you can uh, deploy workloads on different public cloud providers. So those are some of the uh, sessions that you can go to. Any questions? Go ahead. The slides that you're showing, are they available to us in such a way? Uh, are the slides posted anywhere for DevNet? Uh, if you show, shoot me an email, I can just send you the slides as well. So, yeah. Go. Uh, this is the first page. Let me, let me bring it up. It might take some time to get it up. But, oop, that is all I had. Thank you so much. Here's my email address. Do shoot me an email.